the first snowfall of the season has descended, and although the kids are excited, it's left me a little bummed. I'll explain why next. So I was ready to post my next review. I had the video recorded, edited, and it was ready to go. It was a review of the River Country Products Trekker Tent 3. Now there were some issues with the tent and I reached out to River Country Products about those issues. It took them a bit of time to respond and in the meantime I had the video put together and ready to go. But they did get back to me, they admitted that there was a problem with those tents and that they already had a new version. They said they would send me a new one to check out. So since they were sending me a new one, I told them I would hold off on posting that video. I really did want to give a glowing review of that tent. I liked it. Uh, and the company, they say they're a young company, but I think they're trying really hard to put out great products at a great price. And you know, I didn't, my review was negative and I didn't want to hurt their efforts if I didn't have to. And you know, I didn't want my thousands of viewers to, to see that or it, okay. I, I didn't want, I didn't want a dozen people to see that. So the tent was supposed to come this week and therefore with all that snow, um, that's come. Yeah. That kind of hindered the chance of getting that tent up and some rain on it and reviewing it and getting that posted again. So instead, we are going to review for you three different sleeping pads that we've been using for a while now. So the three sleeping pads are the Outdoorsman Lab Ultralight Sleeping Pad, the Big Agnes Air Core Ultra Insulated Sleeping Pad, and the Sea to Summit Comfort Light Insulated Sleeping Pad. One thing that baffles me about these sleeping pads is their R value or lack of R value. I just have no clue how a given pad's R value or temperature rating translates to real world comfort. So we are going to attempt to somewhat scientifically, or at least in a controlled manner, try to determine how the stated values of these three pads affect the temperature of the sleeper. So a little bit about R value first. Well, good morning class. Today, we are going to talk about R value. Now, what is R value, you might ask? Well, I will explain it to you. R value equals the thickness of material in meters divided by its thermal conductivity. Now, does anybody know what that means? You know? Okay. Thermal conductivity is watts over meters Kelvin. So we can express our value in this way. Meters squared Kelvin over watts. Now, class, what does this mean for us? Yeah, so we're going to leave that method in the classroom and try a little bit more practical approach. So I have got this fancy new infrared thermometer and we are going to try and take some strategic measurements of the pads and ourselves and the environment and we're going to see, you know, what that if that gives us any usable information. So we took all of our own measurements of the pad, the weight of them, size of them, all that stuff. So here's that information. The Outdoors Man Lab Ultralight Sleeping Pad is an uninsulated pad and weighs 16.5 ounces with a step sack. It packs down to 3 and 1 half inches by 8 inches. It is 21.6 inches wide and 73 inches long. It has a thickness of 2.2 inches and a claimed R value of 2.2. Now that 2.2 number kind of tipped me off to something. It seemed like the thickness of the pad uh, was giving the R value. And though the calculation really gets into the weeds, uh, generally speaking, it seems that one inch of air has an R value of about one. 
The Big Agnes Air Corps Ultra Insulated Pad weighs in at 20.5 ounces with the stuff sack. It packs down to 5 inches by 8 inches. It is 20 inches wide and 72 inches long. It has a thickness of 3 and 1 half inches and it is given a temperature rating of 32 degrees. Now, I don't know what a temperature rating is exactly and how that translates to our value, but just given that the pad is three and a half inches thick and one inch of air is an R value of one, it's got to be at least around 3.5, right? And, and then it's insulated, so it should be just a tad more than that. Lastly is the Sea to Summer Comfort Light Insulated Pad. It weighs in at 23.6 ounces with the step sack. It packs down to four and one half inches by nine and one half inches. It is 21 and one half inches wide and 72 inches long. And it has a claimed R value of 4.2. So we are going to measure the air temperature, the temperature of the pad surface, and the temperature of the concrete below the pad. Then we will take a reading of our shirt and our skin temperature all before getting on the pad. And then after laying on the pad for 20 minutes. So let's see what happens. Okay, and now for the results. Given that the Outdoorsman Lab pad is uninsulated and only 2.2 inches thick, given that the Big Agnes pad has an R value somewhere between three and four. And given that the C to Summit pad has an R value 4.2, the data that we collected at least supports the progression from colder to warmer pad. So we let the pads get acclimated to the air temperature first, and then we lay it on them for 20 minutes each. Now, I don't know if that was sufficient enough time to allow all the heat transfer that was going to take place happen, but it was about all that our attention spans could muster. So one thing I wanted to accomplish with the collected data was to calculate the actual R value of that Big Agnes air pad. Yeah, it would seem I'm not smart enough to pull that one off. But it wasn't a total loss. We were able to take the known values of the other two pads along with the data that we collected and deduce that the Big Agnes pad had somewhere around a 3.1 R value. That seemed a bit low to me given the three and a half inches of air that's there. Um, but while I was laying on it, I did, it did seem like the air underneath me was colder or a bit chillier than on the sea to summit. So I thought the following measurements were relevant. The change in temperature of our skin the change in temperature of our shirts, the change in temperature of the surface of the pads, and I thought the most important was uh, the temperature differential that the pads were able to maintain between the colder concrete floor and the top of the pad. First up is the Outdoorsman Lab values. As we're walking through these, I mainly want to focus on the delta T from floor to top of pad. This pad maintained a differential of 21.5 degrees Fahrenheit. All these degrees are going to be in Fahrenheit. Next up is the Big Agnes Air Core Ultra insulated pad. For this one, the pad surface temperature increased about 4 degrees more over the 20 minutes. So less body heat was allowed to transfer through this pad versus the Outdoorsman Lab pad. Finally, the C to Summit, although thinner than the Big Agnes, returned the best results. It maintained nearly a 30 degree difference between the cold floor and the top of the pad. Even just five degrees can make a difference in comfort on a chilly night. Although the Sea to Summit pad was superior in its heat retention and its heat transfer numbers, that isn't the only thing to consider. One thing is just how comfortable is the thing to lay on. So my beautiful assistant, she preferred the Sea to Summit. And then I preferred the Big Agnes pad, I think just because it's thicker and I'm a bit heavier. Not in heavier, like that I'm like overweight or anything, just like heavier, you know, than a 
than a nine-year-old girl. Ease of inflation is another one. The outdoorsman lab took me seven breaths to blow up. The Big Agnes took me 18 breaths to blow up and about two head rushes. And the Sea to Summit took me only 12 uh, breaths to blow up and I think one head rush but that was only because I was spent after blowing up the Big Agnes pad. Valves on the Sea to Summit and the Big Agnes were pretty great and the Outdoorsman Lab valve was sufficient um, but it can be a little tricky when you're rolling it up. But here's an important distinction. The Delta Dollars between these three pads is something to note. So they double in price as you go. I was able to get the Outdoorsman Lab pad for about $30. The Big Agnes pad I got for $63. And the Sea to Summit I got on sale for $124. Now are the price differences worth the increases in temperature ratings that they provide? Well that's for you to decide. Well I hope someone found this review helpful, entertaining, or even both. Thanks for your time and you all have a great day.